The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. I think I'd think it was 20 times worse than 1991 and 1992 coming off that recession right now, much less us actually going down. Uh, press kind of a good uh, mirror into the soul of uh, what people, some people think, mostly the people that are extensively wrong. Uh, I bring up from time to time um, the, the uh, let me find it here. Uh, it's a, there's a book, a, Mr. Tetlock. Let me find it out here. Uh, da, da, da. Anyway, it's all about uh, being a super forecaster. Um, but it was kind of amazing uh, that he ran a 20-year study and how many people were actually wrong. Uh, the more that people say that they are an expert on a particular subject, generally the chances of them being wrong is much higher. Uh, it, but I'll just read a small part from the book flap. Um, and this Professor Tetlock decided to put uh, political experts and economic predictions to the test. With the Cold World, uh, Cor I can't even say it, Cold War in full swing, he collected forecasts from 284 highly educated experts who averaged more than 12 years of experience in their specialties. To ensure the predictions were concrete, experts had to give specific probabilities of future events. Tetlock had to collect enough predictions that he would uh, separate lucky and unlucky streaks from true skill. The project lasted 20 years and comprised 82,381 possible estimates about the future. The result, the experts were, by uh, and large, horrific disasters. Their areas especially, years of experience, access to classified information made no difference. They were bad at short-term forecasting. They were bad at long-term forecasting. They were bad at forecasting every domain. When the experts declared the future events were impossible or nearly impossible, 15% of them occurred nonetheless. When they declared events to be a sure thing, more than one quarter of them failed to transpire. As the Danish proverb warns, it's difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. Um, I thought about that this morning when I was <clears throat> seeing the end of the world and why I probably should just jump off a bridge and give up now uh, from the uh, uh, mainstream media, uh, not only about uh, the economy, but everything else. Uh, we're dying from this. We're dying from that. The end of the world is already over. Um, we had some nitwit um, during debates who was uh, saying that uh, we already need to move everybody along the shoreline to higher ground. Uh, I go to the beach every Sunday. I, I can tell you it hasn't creeped up on me at all. Uh, but I do find it very interesting that just the uh, overall huge pessimism from people selling, um, I guess, uh, what Steve Rode, uh, Rhodes earlier said, um, was just flat-out fear. And I don't understand it. Never have things been better in the world. And people described things that are going to go worse. Now, markets go up and down. I'm not a Pollyanna. We've had a fairly long run. We'll probably pull back. But generally, there's some kind of big reason for pulling back. And to this point, um, we haven't reached the point of no return. Uh, and I just, I, I, I want to be sanguine. I don't want to be uh, James Stewart's, or James Stewart, uh, James... Oh, what's the guy? Baby James. Fire and rain. I don't want to be the guy that have to write something about my manic depressive cycles going into the future. So I'm not going to scream about having a huge day today or, cover, uh, or uh, catching all of the eight major lows over the last year and a half with my sector oscillator. Hint, hint, hint. Maybe the best oscillator for buying the lows of any signal that I've ever seen ever. Uh, but... You know what? I, 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 it, I, it, it tended to affect me. 
The other thing that tended to affect me is I was playing a drinking game last night, and uh, it uh, just happened to fall on something that I thought was ridiculous. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I just I didn't think that anybody could say the same stupid phrase that many times in an hour. But uh, now I'm, I'm kind of a little bit, I'm going to go to bed early tonight because of that. Don't play a drinking game uh, where you watch uh, American communists ask about point of personal privilege. Uh, you will not have a liver by the night being over. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, we're up 43 on the S&P cash, although the end is nigh. Um, and time to call the suicide hotline because the Dow is up 282. The Nasdaq's up 142, and the Russell's up 28. I would say it's time to, uh, it, it, with things like this, uh, it's time to jump on the grenade. There's just no point in going forward. Anyway, I'm being facetious for all those people that don't know. But uh, I'm rather bullish, as I said yesterday. I suspect I got hate mail for it, too, uh, thinking that we probably had made the low for the year going into the fall. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in a minute. We've got a guest. <laughs> I've got a cough. And uh, yeah, we've got some interesting things to talk about the rest of the show. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, we're joined today by Tim Ord. Tim Ord, of course, uh, multiple awards for uh, being time of the year for various things, S&P, gold, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we had him on a couple of weeks ago, a uh, big response. So uh, we have him back on again. Last we spoke, Tim, we were looking for yeah, a here. pullback, and we got good. it. How are you doing today? Good, good. Um, actually, uh I sent you four charts. Uh, we can kind of go backwards because you were talking about the S and P's, and and I want to show a chart. If you can, you pull up chart number four. We've got that's it up. The last. You got it. We got it. All right. This this is a weekly chart, and uh, we're actually bullish uh, on uh, twenty nine forty area. We got a buy signal, and anyhow, the market uh, gap down on that Monday, that three percent down gap. Well, this Monday. And uh, it actually, the reason why we were bullish at that point, we got some panics and a ticks and trend, whatever. Well, that signal failed, and we busted through uh, some support levels, which is basically the uh, the 2018 high and the early uh, 2019 high were basically the the May high, maybe April, late April high, and that was around that 2940 range, give or take. And we're just rallying back to it. This chart's probably about an hour old, the one I sent you. And we're just rallying back to it right now. Um, and uh, so this, this area we're in right smack right now on a weekly time frame is a resistance area. Can we bust through it? Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, uh, but I'm saying we're probably not because we really had a sign of weakness through that level. And now that level uh, may become resistant. The week's not over. If we bust through it, say we get up to 2950, then um, then the whole story changes. But I'm thinking this area right here uh, could be resistance. Um, let's, let's take a look at uh, the next chart. It would be chart number three for you. Is a daily chart. Okay, hang on just and, a second. Uh, um, let's get this up for some reason. I've got issues here with my technology. Hang on just a second. No, it's not no doing it. Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, when we get this with Hotcom, it just, I have to reboot the computer. There's no way of getting around it. Um, we'll talk about these charts. Anybody that wants them, um, I will email them to you at the break. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. Um, okay, we're back to the charts. Uh, you're looking at chart four, right? Yeah, chart four, uh, we pulled that up, and I wanted to, uh, but you can't get to chart three? Oh, no, I can get chart three. They're just not seeing it oh. right now. So when we come back from the break, I'll reboot my machine. But um, Okay. And, well, we got, so we really don't have any charts right now? I'm seeing them, so you can go ahead and talk. All right. Okay. Well, on chart three, this is the uh, we looked at chart four, which was uh, the weeklies, and I showed you around uh, the 2940 area on the SPX is the resistance because that was the uh, 2018 high and the May 2019 highs. We uh, fell through that area on Monday with a big three percent down day, and now we're coming back on the daily charts. It, it shows up, and we're just filling that gap right now. Uh, the market's uh, pretty much closed that gap. And that, are you there? Yeah, I think they're going to break early and we'll come back here in just a minute. And I'll reboot my machine during the break. All right, sounds good.
The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, hopefully, we've got our technical issues done. And uh, to, to, to hang on just one second. I will be able to conference back in. Uh, what chart are we looking at now, Tim? Well, uh, do we uh, do we show the the weekly chart, chart number four? Uh, no, we haven't. So let's go ahead and look at that. Yeah, one. just repeat it that, that real quick. Oh, there we go, right there on chart four. Go ahead. All right. Uh, well, we we busted above it back in you know July there, and I said uh, there's no sign of strength through that high. And so it could be a false breakout to the upside. Then we had a bearish engulfing pattern. Then uh, this week, you know, we gapped through the 2940 area, which is the previous highs of 2019, you know, the May highs, and then 2018 September highs. And we fell through that area with a sign of weakness. And now we're just coming back up at today. This chart's about an hour old, but we're rallying back up to that resistance area right now. And uh, on the weekly chart, this area right here should be resistance. Uh, so um, now, now flip to chart number three. This is a daily chart. Uh, you, I'll give you time to give it up. Or we it we've up. got it up. Oh, you got it up. All right. Yep. This is okay. The, we flip to a, the chart number three, which is a daily chart. We had a big gap down on Monday. And now we're rallying into that gap to fill the gap. Well, that gap, uh, again, you know, it came right around that 2940 area, 2930 area. It depends 
where your trend lines are. But we filled the gap today. Uh, today's not over yet. This chart, again, is about an hour old. Uh, but chances are we're not going to fill that gap with higher volume. We're going to fill it with lighter volume. So that gap most likely is going to be resistance. So my bet is, is we'll probably make an, a short-term minor high right now, uh, probably today, maybe tomorrow. If it does push a little higher, it's not going to push much higher than wherever today's high is. And if you notice on Monday there, we had a big spike in volume. The high volume days are normally tested. And we never touched that low yet. You know, it came close to it yesterday, but we didn't touch that low. And most times when you get a high volume low or high, you go down and test them. If you can't get through them, that becomes support and you go back up again. So on a very short-term basis here, um, this is probably rat resistance right around here. And we got support at Monday's low. And so if we really barrel down high volume, then Monday's low may not hold. We may go lower. So I don't know. But right now I'm thinking the upside is pretty limited. Uh, the way it stands. So, and you know, if, if you go back down to Monday's low, we I think we were six days down in a row, which is quite a bit of uh, energy to the downside. Uh, so, in my opinion, we'll need a little bit of base forming here to really build some a base to really get going to the upside. But at a minimum, I, I think we got, need to test Monday's low, and then from there we'll have to wait and see what goes what develops there next. But uh, uh, I'm thinking right now that uh, this rally is probably done, you know, right around here, either today or tomorrow. Next week's option expiration week, which normally has a bullish bias, but uh, I don't know. It could be a down week. Don't know. So that's what do, you, uh, what do you think about all the action yesterday being on Delta neutral day or as you used to call it, weird Wally Wallencheck Wednesday. But, oh, yeah, uh, weird Wally, yeah, weird Wally Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I tell you what, expiration week or the week before expiration week, it's you got to be real careful. And and uh, we were actually bullish on Friday. I'm thinking I knew ex expiration week was coming up, or the week before we Wally Wednesday or the week before expiration week was going to be, you know, whipsaws are common. And I'm thinking, well, I think it's okay. And and sure enough, you know, the market blasts down and comes back. And so it, it kind of caught me by surprise, but. Uh, um, you know, next week, you know, the way I'm kind of looking at it right now is, is, is it'd be, a, uh, I think, a test of Monday's low at some point before next week is out. Uh, so that's how I'm looking at uh, this setup, I guess. So I don't think this rally is going to continue. So, but yeah, I wanted to point that out on a bigger time frame here. This 240, 2940 range on the SPX is a kind of a resistance area. And the first time up to it, which we're hitting it around it there today, may not make it through it. So you may pull back and try again, you know, maybe later. Uh, so, but uh, uh, normally when you break, uh, you know, the weekly charts down, it's, it takes time to get back up through them. So, uh, you know, the next couple of months, I think it's going to, in my opinion, it's going to be a little bit messy here. So, um but you, know, you got any questions about that? I got two other charts I want to show you. Well, what would it take to negate the the bearish view of yesterday is, uh, and maybe even the last few days is nothing more than a uh, a false breakdown, even though you had the volume. Any close above twenty nine fifty? How high do we have to go to just say that uh, that was a, a false flag? The, well, the books say you got to have uh, four days up. Four days closes above a resistance area, or uh, three percent or more. So if we go four per day, say we close at twenty, uh, I think twenty nine fifty. We can hold there for uh, four days, and you're okay. Okay, it's broke resistance. Market can go higher, or we can go three percent higher, which is quite a ways higher than that. But so we have to, you know, put it this way: we set here for four days around this level. I, I would be, if you were bearish, I'd be pretty scared. So either we break, you know, if we, we're we still sitting here, what's today, uh, Thursday, we're sitting here next Tuesday around this range, then I'm thinking we're not backing away from resistance. We're eating up the, the, the supply to go through it. So a uh, four-day rule, I guess, or a 3% break above resistance. So, so if the market sits here and we're still here next Tuesday, 
then I, I'm thinking, yeah, the Bulls Bulls won that round, and we're going to uh, start to push higher again. Overall, though, you're oh. longer term bullish, right? Yeah, I'm longer term bullish. Uh, I think uh, we'll break new highs before the year's out, uh, above three thousand. But I'm just saying, you know, we did a little bit of damage. You know, twenty nine forty should have held. And so, you know, we're more of a, my opinion, in a trading range over the next two, three months uh, than an uptrend. So, but that's good. You need, you know, you need to build a trading range to get an impulse wave going. So I, I think your impulse wave is coming, but, uh, you know, that, imp that may not start until October and maybe even November. Would so, you want you know, to describe what an impulse yeah. Would ahead, you want sorry. to describe what an impulse wave is? They probably haven't listened to you or read your book, or most of them yet although I recommend your book highly, uh, Impulse Wave. It's, it's what? Pardon? You I want... said, can you describe Hello? what an Impulse Wave is? Oh, Impulse impulse Wave is, in a nutshell, is a strong move on a really decent volume. Do you, you want the open the high, uh, the open and close be uh, pretty wide, and you want increased volume, so as you're going up, the price uh, between open and close is expanding, and volume is a gradual increase. Uh, so it shows strength behind the move up. So uh, they call that an impulse wave. The moves that are real jerky, uh, you know, I have one big day up and a big volume or something like that that doesn't follow through, and the next day is some like a doji or a narrow trading range and, and light volume. Uh, those can lead to, a, you know, short-term pullbacks. But impulse waves just basically a line up on a weekly time frame with higher highs, higher lows on increased volume. So, and I, I think that, that that's not where we're going to have here. We're going to have more of a, uh, you know, some rally attempts that fail and some probably declining attempts, and, then, and that fails. And that's just um, a sideways market uh, where it kind of builds around in a trading range. But trading ranges are good because after trading ranges, impulse waves happen. So, um you know, so but we've got a couple other we're, charts we're here. Which one do you want to go to next? Okay, um, I use a couple of charts. Everybody's kind of, you know, at least my client's really nervous on gold for some reason. I'm trading GDX. Uh, we can, the first chart I sent you is a, a daily chart, and this is a pretty good indicator I kind of developed over over the years. And uh, the bottom indicator is a. Uh, it's GDX advanced decline, what they call it percent. Um, it's on stock charts, and you can it's GDX ADP. And I took an 18 moving, 18-day uh, moving average of that. And uh, normally, when it's above zero, uh, markets an uptrend. When it's below zero, it's an, uh, basically a downtrend. But uh, what I wanted to point out in this daily chart is, if you look back at the 2016 run up. Uh, the bottom window there is, is again, is a 18 uh, advanced decline with 18 moving average. It stayed above zero all through that advance. And if you notice right now, this chart's uh, well, it's, I, I printed it out today. We're still quite a ways above the zero line there. So that remains in bullish uh, configurations. Uh, the next chart, uh, chart up is the up-down volume percent and also took it to 18-day moving average of it. If you notice back in, again, the 2016 run up, it stayed above zero. Well, we're doing it right now, too. So even though the market has run here for a couple of months since May, uh, it's still holding above uh, zero. So in my opinion, uh, this chart for GDX rally is not done. I marked uh, on the top chart there is a GDX, and I think we at least get back to the highs of 2016 which is around 31, and I'm thinking uh, and we're not too far from there right now. And uh, 31 may be exceeded, I don't know, because right now I'm not seeing any weakness in the up-down volume indicator or the advanced line indicator, as both of them are holding above zero. So I, I think there's still more legs to uh, at least the GDX rally. Uh, so I, I just want to point that chart out. Uh, can we flip to chart two now? Yep. Um, this is the same, yeah, this is the same chart again, but the only thing I, I kind of discovered on this chart uh, was is, is kind of unique here when this uh, chart gets below 30, 
both on the up-down volume and advanced decline, I've got uh, blue uh, vertical lines on that. And usually they're awful close to a, a low. So what this chart does is it defines uh, exhaustion moves to the downside. So every time both the up-down volume and the advanced decline got below 30, uh, if you notice, you're, you're pretty much picking out the lows pretty close of all those lows going back to uh, this chart goes, I think, back to 2016, mid-2016. And actually, you know, last time we got down there was basically in um, May, and the market went sideways there for about a month, and uh, it was, you know, pretty much skyrocketed from there. So that picked up that uh, low pretty good, even though it got the price low time-wise. It, it burned up, you know, it went sideways for a couple, three weeks before the market actually got going. But it was pretty close to the low in price. So I think that the indicator is pretty good. Okay, we're going to go to break here. We'll be back in just a minute. Got a couple questions for you. We'll wrap it up and we'll talk about some of the stocks and earnings after the bell tonight. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, Tim, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. So, uh, 
Uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. I had a couple of people asking me who you are. I think we said it at the very beginning. So I just wanted to remind that we've got Tim Ord on from the Ord Oracle. Um, been around for a long time, has a newsletter. When we're talking here too, um, just be advised that Tim is where I'm kind of a medium term trader. I'd say he's even uh, more uh, looking at even a longer term than than I do. So if you're looking at uh, and listening to him, tends to be a uh, have a, a far longer range than I do on a general basis, where I tend to be more of a swing trader. Um, so we're looking at this chart. Um, let's see, yeah, chart. Uh, Which one? What is it chart two that we were looking for chart two, now? Or are you yeah, chart. Yeah, chart two is the uh, GDX chart. And the bottom window is that um, as, when it gets below 30, whatever. Is that one we're talking about? Mm, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, well, we, we kind of went through it. That's what I'm saying is, is, is uh, it's a good chart to measure exhaustions, uh, short-term exhaustions in the GDX index. And uh, when the um, up-down volume 18 moving average is below 30 and the up uh, and the advanced decline uh, 18 moving average is below 30, and when both those uh, things occur, you're usually at a, a decent low on GDX. So it kind of measures exhaustion moves to the downside. Uh, on the upside, it works, uh, it doesn't really get an exhaustion move when markets, you know, uh, when markets goes down, they have kind of different personalities than when they go up. They don't uh, really, uh, exhaustion move to the upside off of a low is usually bullish. You also move to the downside, it's usually, uh, um, well, that'd, that'd be actually uh, uh, a lot of times bearish. But um, right now, uh, what I'm saying is GDX, even though it has a decent run up from the uh, May low, I don't think the rally is over yet as the up down volume and advanced decline indicators are still above zero and quite a ways above zero. So, uh, in my opinion, because of this indicator, this uh, GDX still has legs here. So okay. I thought we might get to 31, but we, we may surpass that according to this indicator. Good enough. Uh, I've got uh, your book. I'm holding it up here. Hopefully you can see fairly good. The Secret uh, Science of Price and Volume. And uh, your uh, website is at uh, ord-oracle.com where they can reach you there. I want to thank you for coming on today. And, uh, well, thank you for you having me. Have a great me. day. Okay, maybe we'll talk to you again in a couple weeks. That'd be fine. I'd be glad to come back on. Okay, thanks much. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. You bet. Now, and let's get to some of the other things, like the market, which is already in progress over most of TFNN. I've got to clear a few things out of my way here. Let's get this done. Um, I think I've got all the charts out except one for Larry. We'll get that out during the next break. Uh, to, 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 we're up uh, 45, eh, let's call it 46 points on the S&P cash, and eh, 47 points. Uh, when we look at the dollar, uh, come on, right there, uh, pretty much uh, in the same trading range, up uh, almost a nickel, $97.39. Uh, uh, and, of course, uh, the volume as we look at that, um, actually fairly decent, not as bad as you would think, not as strong as the downside. Uh, but still not weak, um, or in, at least my opinion. We're doing over 5 billion shares as we get uh, man, an hour and 15 minutes left. You'd probably like to see a little bit more, not uh, un, uh, uh, uncommon to see a huge downtrend, uh, get an instant reversal, and then go sideways for a while. When we look at options, uh, this is kind of at the upper ranges of what options already telling us uh, to do. I wanted to look at Apple real quick. Uh, we had Skyworks Solutions out after the bell last night. We'll look at that in a second. Um, not a lot of push in Apple, though, which I there weren't SWKS. It's a symbol for Skyworks Solutions. Um, not a lot of range in it either out here. Uh, I think a lot of discussions, uh, both in Apple and the cellular uh, market, is uh, the trend uh, for 5G phones. In fact, 
Qual or not Qualcomm, Samsung's Note with 5G uh, kind of leaked yesterday. We're starting to get some more uh, comments about that, but we're kind of talking about October, really f uh, before this starts moving uh, fairly uh, fast in the 5G space. Uh, and the question is, these guys um, are only gonna start shipping chips when the phones really start moving. And Apple, basically the same kind of thing. There may be a two month lead in these chip stocks, uh, but I think really when the volumes are gonna start are kind of probably be about close to the end of the year. Um, but uh, and that generally means that they'll ramp up before then. Uh, it wasn't a horrible report. It was down last night after hours uh, for Skyworks, but eh, didn't really do that bad today and actually up a little bit on the news. I uh, had a lot of earnings calls uh, last night and this morning. And uh, ooh, too, let me hang on just a second. We're going to get to uh, the ones that moved the most. Um, Stamps.com, that's TMB. I thought this thing might do a little bit better. Uh, and again, the, the problem was that you're still looking for the third gap down uh, in this thing. I think it could still come. Uh, but man, uh, this is pretty much the big winner of the day with uh, 24 points higher. Yeah, 24 percent higher. Excuse me. Uh, but of course, this thing has come way off the $285.75 high. Uh, the downside is that you probably get to 75, 78 bucks, and that would be probably if you wanted to reshort this uh, is probably somewhere close to it. Another uh, huge favorite of the short brigade is Mercado Libre. It's up 13% today. It is breaking through a new uh, and all-time high. You go back to the 20th of June with 581,000 shares. You already have 834,000 uh, shares already. So pretty good day for that. On the loser side of stocks, uh, has been 3D Systems. It's down about 14%. Gap down, broke through some of the levels going back to November 15th of 2017. Uh, that had 6 million shares. You have about 4 million shares, so it, it could have been worse. Uh, the downside is that you're going to need a lot of consolidation uh, to move around it in this. Um, you might think this weird, but I'm thinking that maybe in two to four weeks, this might be a uh, total washout of this stock. Um, it's been a good trader, uh, but uh, again, uh, a pretty fast moving stock. If this thing can consolidate out down at these levels, um, the business actually doesn't look that bad and they weren't losing money, they just broke even. So uh, getting whipped, uh, much worse than I think the news should uh, suggest. We'll be back after this break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. If you didn't get the uh, charts earlier that we were talking about, email me again at path at tfnn.com. We'll be glad to send those out to you. Um, got a question in the den. Now, how big a deal is AMD selling chips to Google data centers in favor of Intel chips? Uh, the answer is I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, any news on a massively shorted stock like AMD uh, can pop it. In fact, you had a fairly big move out there. Yeah, you know, in AMD, though, you already had a light ball. You moved back up to the top. That 300 million share high was tested with 70 million shares you came back down uh, but again i'm not a big fan of of pushing amd uh, because uh, the margins are going to be uh, moving down as they get very price competitive uh, with intel uh, and of course uh, intel actually getting in amd's grill uh, with its own video cards that will be coming out uh, before 2020 or around around Christmas time. I don't know how, you know, right off the bat, how effective they're going to be. Uh, but uh, the scale at which Intel uh, manufactures is about 10 times uh, what AMD does. Not a big deal for them selling chips into the data center because AMD really doesn't have anything even closely to compete with the server chips. If you're talking about low-end chips, for uh, near-term uh, data, that is data that can wait up to five seconds to uh, uh, be stored offline. That's basically what AMD's chips are going to be used for. Uh, not a huge part of the market, and it's certainly not a part of the market that makes high margins. So um, if you're Intel, you want to kind of try to uh, keep as much as that business as you can, uh, but um, it's not going to make you a lot of money. and probably going to cost you a little bit. Hang on for the next two hours for Tom O'Brien. Got a little earnings after the bell tonight, and like last night. A lot of stuff moving. Sell when you can, not when you have to. I will see you here tomorrow. Same back channel, same back time.